In this video, we're going to talk about how to use benchmark fractions in order to compare two fractions with unlike denominators. So first we need to think about what are benchmark fractions. Benchmark fractions are numbers like zero, one half, or one whole. So thinking about numbers that are going to be around one half, what are numbers that are equivalent to one half? So if we think about our, take a break from our number line and think about our fraction bars, one half. Two fourths are going to be equivalent to one half. So that is going to be the same size. Two fourths. Another fraction that would be equivalent is three sixths. One, two, three, same size. Three sixths. Another fraction that would be also equivalent. Let's see? One, two, three, four eighths. And one, two, three, four, five tenths, and finally, one, two, three, four, five, six twelfths. Now if we look at these fractions, an easy way of remembering these benchmark fractions of 2 fourths, 3 sixths, 4 eighths, and so on, is to think about how 2 is half of 4. If we look at our fraction bars, we know if we take this one piece, this whole, and divide it in half, I'm going to have two pieces. But let's look down here at the fourths. We said 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half. And if we look at how many, one, two, three, four, and we divide that in half, we have two pieces on this side and two pieces on that side. That also shows us that two plus two equals four. Same thing if we look at the sixths. If we divide the sixths in half, and we have six pieces make one whole, we divide that in half, we are going to have three. Three plus 3 equals 6. Same thing with eighths. We divide eighths in half. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 eighths. Now, let's think about other benchmark fractions, such as one whole. What fractions are equivalent to one whole? Well, two halves, three thirds, four fourths, five fifths, six sixths, and so on. We know that fractions are parts of a whole. If we take the parts and put them together, if we have two halves, that's going to be the same as one whole one, two, three thirds, put them together, and they're the same size as one whole. Same thing here. We divide our whole into four parts, but if we have all of the parts, then that is the same as one whole. I like to think about chocolate all the time when I think of fractions. If I have a chocolate bar and it has five parts to it, if I'm dividing it into five pieces, and I put all those five pieces together, it is the same thing as one whole chocolate bar. Okay, so let's look at how this will help us with fractions. So for an example, I have six eighths and I'm comparing it to two sixths. Now, I can use my benchmark fractions as one half to decide which one is bigger. So how many eighths is equivalent to one half. 
Well, half of eight is four. And I know one half is equivalent to four eighths. Now I'm gonna look over at the sixths. How many sixths are equivalent to one half? That would be three sixths. Now, which one of these is bigger? Four sixths is bigger than four eighths. That means six eighths is going to be about here on my number line, six eighths, because it is bigger than one half or greater than one half. But two sixths, that is smaller than one half. Three sixths is equivalent to one half. So that means my two sixths is gonna be about here. Two sixths. I'll put my four eighths here too. <clears throat> now looking at my fraction, I can see which one is bigger because the fraction that is closest to one whole is going to be bigger. And six eighths is closer to one whole. So I know six eighths is greater than two sixths. Okay, so let's look at another example. Two thirds, and I'm comparing it to one fifth. Now if I look at my denominators, these aren't as easy as dealing with eighths and sixths because they're not even numbers. So my benchmark of one half, I'm not gonna be looking for what would be one half and then comparing it like I did here with six eighths and four eighths because there is no thirds that are equivalent to one half. Same thing with fifths. There is no fifths that are equivalent to one half. So instead I'm going to think about my benchmark fractions of zero and one. So how many thirds would equal one? Three thirds is equivalent to one. How many fifths would be equivalent to one? Is five fifths. So if I think about two thirds, two is less than one whole, but very close because I'm just missing one piece in order to be one whole. So I'm gonna roughly gauge that two thirds would be about here. Now one fifth is very far away from five fifths, but if I think about my other benchmark fraction of zero, zero fifths, one fifth is just one away from zero. So that would probably be here, closer to zero. I can even check my work using fraction bars. So I have two thirds, and if I'm thinking about one half as a benchmark, yes, it's just a little bit bigger than one half. So yes, I think I put that in the right spot. And then one fifth. I have one fifth is smaller than one third and very close to zero and less than one half. So after checking my work with the fraction bars, I know two thirds is greater than one fifth.